everybody, it is Tracy here from Beyond Obedience, and it is time once again for fake fireside chats with Tracy and Rue. She doesn't care. She doesn't, she doesn't care anymore. <laughs> Today is the third and final installment for Marianne's question about her dog Gus and his 7 p.m. behavior of grabbing onto her husband's arm and chewing them, that kind of thing. And this installment is the slap you in the face reality check. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit more about this and um, I'm gonna get a little bit more real about this, okay? So I'm gonna bring my notes back up uh, from that I made from, from uh, when I first got your question. And I made a lot of notes, Marianne. And uh, one of the things that I first wrote down when I was reading through your post was this idea, I wrote intent. Um, and state of mind and that sort of thing. But intent being that Gus clearly understands intent. All dogs understand intent, per, to be perfectly honest with you. All dogs understand intent more so than they understand your, uh, your words, your obedience commands, any of that. Which is why uh, he knows that he can't do it with you because you said, and you, you, clarify, or you said in your post that when he tried it on you, it was a hard no right? Dogs understand the hard no. They really, really do. And a short sidebar, there was this wonderful lady that had come in for an assessment once and she was telling me about how her dog was blowing off all these commands and rushing through thresholds and bursting out the door and jumping on people and not listening to her whatsoever. And then somewhere throughout the conversation, she had mentioned to me that her living room was a no dog zone because she had spent thousands of dollars on this beautiful cream carpet and there was no way in hell that dog was gonna get in there ever. And I said, well, just out of curiosity, has the dog ever broken that rule? And she was like, she would never. Like, she was just like, no. And I said, well, then you know that your dog understands that you just have to get your intent. That level of intent for that room needs to be for all your other stuff, right? That same intent should be about your door threshold. When you open the door, it should not only be a no, you can't go out there, it should be a hell no, right? So the fact that Gus understands this um, would lead you obviously to believe that your husband is default, right? But his intent has been more playful, right? You have had a, oh hell no, I don't want you biting on me, but your husband has a more playful intent, right? Now unfortunately, dogs don't, get that and they, everything's a test for them. They're going to try it on everybody. So yes, your 80 year old mother, he's gonna try it on, cause why not? He doesn't know, it's hard no for you, it's playful for this, he's gotta try it on every person. And if your mother and children don't have that same intent, he's not gonna get it. So obviously we have to teach him, well more importantly, we have to teach your husband a better way to do it, which is why last week we talked about the beyond obedience answer, we talked about tug, right? Utilizing tug and fulfillment in a better way. If this is a playful way that your that your that your dog and your husband want to engage with one another, that's fantastic. Just do it in a different way. Okay? So intense a big one. But the other one I have here is I want you to start thinking about your thought process when you're talking about the behaviors, okay? Because you've made some comments here. I put down here, uh, your one question was, is this property slash dominance thing for Gus? I don't even know what that means, to be honest with you. I'm like property dominance. I don't really know what that means. Or a confidence thing. I'm not sure I understand what the confidence part of that would have to be. Like is, is it confidence? I don't think so. I think this is how Gus is trying to be fulfilled. Then you have here, uh, you realize that there's less distractions for Gus inside and it happens when you have company over and you're not paying attention to him. And then you put boredom question mark. Uh, ding, 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 right? But I want you to reframe it, okay? I want, this is the reality check of this. I want you to reframe this in your mind because this is gonna swing back to the intent, right? When you question things about your dog and you say things like, is it dominance, is it property? Again, I don't really know what any of that has to do. Like, um, I would say possessionary maybe, but it doesn't matter because you're framing it in this trying to figure it out way. Um, and then you said, 
you know, boredom, question mark. I'm gonna, I'm going to encourage you to say things like, uh, is it just that he's being a punk ass? Because I think he's being a punk ass is what I think, okay? Witching hour, 7 p.m., all of that stuff, we can explain it all away, but at the end of the day, if this was a teenage child, right, that was in your face at 7 p.m. because you're not paying attention to him going, mom, 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 because you've got guests over and he's not the number one thing going on right now, how would you respond to that? Okay? Because that is exactly what's going on. When you have company over and he's not the number one thing in your life right now, he's going to act out. He's going to test. He's going to try things. What gets him attention? And the bottom line is, is he, it ends up working. He gets attention. You have to be vigilant. You have to be like, no, you have to put a leash on him. You got to like walk around. You're spending most of your time worried about this dog. Place command again is going to help with that because then you send him to place and he has to stay there, right? But also how you're dealing with it, how the intent of your intent here in this moment is to go, oh, I wonder why. Well, I don't really, I don't, I'll be honest with you, I don't really care why. I don't care why my dog's doing this. This is unacceptable behavior. It's a hell no for me, right? And as a sidebar, I have the exact same mentality about my kids. One of my biggest pet peeves are children that interrupt me when I'm having adult conversations and I don't like it. And that's probably not a very popular view anymore, but it is my reality. When I was a child, I was never allowed to interrupt my parents if they were talking, unless there was an emergency, obviously. But the same thing holds true for my dogs. I love my dogs, but if I'm having an interaction with another person and my dog is nudging me or bugging me or putting a ball on my lap or expecting me to pet him or touch him or any of that stuff, that's all manipulation, okay? So I need you to kind of reframe what you're thinking here, okay? I need you to reframe it in your mind because when you start to frame it, as manipulation, bratty, snotty behavior, your intent will shine through, right? Your, your intent will come through with this. When you start going, maybe he's bored. What if he's this? Maybe we didn't take him out enough. Maybe this, maybe that. Then your intent softens and your dogs will manipulate the crap out of you, okay? So, the slap you in the face of all of this is essentially just to wrap your head around it. Now as a sidebar, trainers will quite often do this uh, when they're working with their clients and will say things like, your dog is being a brat, right? Because when you say it to people that way, they'll go, oh my gosh, I can't believe he's being bratty. And this, oh, this is what will change that behavior around. But Oh, I wonder if he's bored. Like maybe, because saying that he's bored is gonna make you feel responsible to give him something to do. Like, oh, I should probably do something for him. No, he can just go lie down. It won't be the end of the world if you have company over, right? He can just go chill over there, right? Am I right? I might, I don't know. This slap you in the face reality check is brought to you by common sense. No, <laughs> the slap you in the face reality check, you can take it or leave it. I'm just adding this in as I really want people to stop and think about their dogs in different ways. Yes, we love our dogs, but you need to understand that this is a creature that is a master manipulator of our emotions. And when we become emotional, we lose leadership score points, we lose our intent, we lose all ability to actually communicate to them and they take over. All right, does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. I hope I didn't offend you, but I hope that makes sense. I want you to reframe how you're thinking about this, okay? Because the bottom line is, is if I had company come over, if your company comes over and it happens to be in the witching hour where normally my dog starts to act out, then yeah, you know what? If you want to, to ask your husband to take him outside 
and shake a, you know, play tug with them for a little bit, but then he goes back on place. Knock it off, you know? Knock it off. You need to have that intent. You need to have that same intent that the lady had with the brand new expensive cream rug. The hell no, you're not coming into this room intent. And that's what will change this for you. Okay? I hope that makes sense. And that is all three parts of this question, Marianne. Thank you very much for that. Thank you for letting us unpeel this onion a little bit. I hope it helps you. I hope it helps others. Again, to recap, the obedience of it, teaching your dog place command. Place is a beautiful command. Calm on command, meditation for dogs. The beyond obedience answer. Uh, the four uh, situational learning, the four situations of life, as well as play and tug with your dog, getting that fulfillment factor in a way that's more beneficial than just going out and playing fetch, right? Thinking about that state of mind. How is your dog's state of mind? Is your dog going to be fulfilled at the end of this or is he just gonna be amped up? And then finally, the slap you in the face reality check, the intent, your intent, how your dog handles intent, as well as reframing your thought process in your head to bring out the proper intent that you need to change this situation. Thanks once again, Marianne, for your wonderful questions. If you have a question you would like me to break down here in fake fireside chats with Tracy and Drew, feel free to comment below. Send me a private message. If you don't want me to do a shout out because this is a little bit too intense, just also let me know. I can be discreet. I can be discreet. I hope you all are having a fantastic day and I'll see you next week on Fake Fireside.